this is the point where maybe we're defeated and the challenge has beaten us. We are left this year with just £91.90 of credit and that is based on us exporting £832 worth of energy but importing £740 worth of energy. And let me remind you before we go any further, the purpose of this is to answer the question, are home batteries necessary and are northwest facing panels worth it? So a reminder of my setup, I've got six 430 watt panels facing southeast on the front of the house and on the rear of my house facing northwest I've got 16 430 watt panels that all goes through my sunsink 8.8 .8 kilowatt inverter and throughout the whole year I've had no battery and I've been absorbing all of this information of whether our home battery is worthwhile for me we're fully electric here with a 7 kilowatt heat pump providing hot water and heating and we've got an mg5 as an electric car as well this is how we did for export in the month of november and it's very poor indeed reminder that we're on the octopus fixed export 15 pence per kilowatt hour we exported 44 got paid six pounds 60. this is how we did on the imports and it's also very bad we had a bit of a cold snap and used lots of electricity on a few days but you can see actually this highest peak here of the most consumption also resulted in a negative cost because the agile rates were so low but for the vast majority of the month the agile rates were very high we had very little solar and it was a perfect storm of everything that was going against us so ultimately we imported 900 kilowatt hours we paid 159 pounds and that averages our unit rate at 17.7 pence Okay, so now for the year, we're looking at £740 that it's cost us 4,246 kilowatt hours. You can still see, although November was poor, we used more kilowatt hours in November than we did in the month of January. But in the month of January, it cost us a lot more than it did in the month of November. So we are learning things as we're going through the year and Agile has still been a great tariff for us. So here's a quick overview of the month before we get into the nitty gritty details. We generated 153.8 kilowatt hours of solar. We exported 44 of that. Of course, we've already talked about the import. That leaves us with a deficit of £152.49. And as I said before, it's the perfect storm of poor solar, high agile rates and a cold snap for our heat pump consuming more energy as well, which made it a real challenge for November. Once again, we did outperform the, the forecast for our solar generation just here in the month of November, 154 versus 149. And you can see we're continuing the trend over the year. And this is the summary for the whole year. We were forecast 6,261 and we achieved 7,425 so far. Not that December's looking that great. In blue, we're showing you the profile of the exported energy and in this purpley color we're looking at the imported energy and you can see how it's inverted but we are using a strategy of seasonal offsetting exporting as much as we can in the summer to build up credit to then ride ourselves through the winter and that last chart was in kilowatt hours and this one is in pounds so you can see the uh enormous amount of credits we were building up in the summer months but we've been quickly spending that now in these cold months a reminder if you want to be one of the one percent just hit that like button put a comment in there how's your month gone what have you generated have you also had a challenge in time this once again is one of the graphs that's generated by my sunsink inverter it shows both in green our overall solar generation and then in the yellow our solar export here's the heat pump consumption that people are very interested in you can see we consumed quite a lot more 377 kilowatt hours that's the highest apart from january this year all the other months but we generated 1416 kilowatt hours of heat that electrical consumption translates into an into an electricity cost of 57 pounds and we only achieved a coefficient of performance of 3.6 during this month for both heating and hot water. And that is due to me running it like a maniac to try and utilize the best agile rates because it's coming down to the wire towards the end of the year. And I wanted to beat this challenge that I've set myself. My wife thinks I'm obsessed and she thinks I'm crazy, but uh, I'm kind of giving up as the days go on in December anyway. Uh, I shouldn't admit that, should I? This was the EV charging through the month. We used the car a lot more this month. I'm not exactly sure why we didn't do like any big trips or anything, but it seems like we were using it a lot more. 
and this is an approximation because the app isn't quite working at the moment to tell me exactly how much it cost me but at an average rate of 15p it's about 51 pounds for that charging in the ev okay so this was a new slide last month and this was a popular one so i thought we'd come back to it and keep it updated you can see the amount of energy supplied by the grid and consumed from our solar panels and their generation and then translated into pounds over here and then the breakdown the split of how much we attribute that consumption to the heat pump to our ev and then to the general home consumption and that's a quite an interesting split and that's changed quite dramatically from last month and then once again translated into pounds over here and you can see the full numbers over on the left hand side this is how we fared for generation through the month and as you can see our worst day was right here where we generated just 0 0.9 kilowatt hours and our very best day was only 9.4 compared that to october and it's quite a stark contrast and the mean was just five kilowatt hours one of the most popular bits of analysis we've been doing this year is the northwest facing panels versus the southeast facing panels and here you can see the northwest ones generated 88.9 and southeast 64.9 and that translates to 58 percent generated by my northwest West roof and 42% generated by the southeast. 73% of the surface area of the solar panels is on the northwest roof. So you can see it's kind of underperforming as the months go on and as the light gets, the sun gets lower in the sky. Per panel production, that translates rounded numbers. Don't hate me. I know that this, this is a bit flawed. Maybe I should put some decimal places in here to help you. But it's 11 versus 6 now for the month of November. So the Northwest panels are still performing as I would expect and even better than expected. But during the summer months, we saw them just being heroic. And we're not seeing that quite as much now as the light is fading. So what about optimizers? Optimizers have actually in the month of November started to come into their own every kilowatt our uh, counts and as you can see we reclaimed 11 kilowatt hours or 16 percent of the energy on our southeast panels was due to the optimizers apparently according to the tigo reporting throughout the rest of the year this figure was one or two percent when the sun was higher in the sky but as the shading is coming more into play with this this front uh, part of the roof causing a shadow on there from about midday onwards the Tigo optimizers are actually doing something. So whether they are worth their while, financially, I think not. The data is good. And if you and if you really want to get the most out of every kilowatt hour, then maybe they're going to be beneficial for you. So this is the profile for the export. And as you can see, there was a day where we exported nothing. And our best day of export was just four kilowatt hours. And that leaves us a mean of 1.42 kilowatt hours. Uh, just shocking like 20p a day and just to simplify how what we did with the solar energy we consumed 110 kilowatt hours we exported 44 that translates into 17 pounds self-consumed and seven pounds exported so this year i've been with octopus energy for the bulk of the year i've been on octopus agile it's been a brilliant tariff and it's been a fun one to explore if you're interested you sign up follow my link you get 50 pounds i get 50 pounds um i'm also for the month of december i've changed tariffs if you're one of my channel members you already know about that the rest of you you're gonna have to wait till the end of the year and you'll see which tariff i've chosen and and why I've chosen it and I'll have a lot more data to prove that it was worthwhile jumping ship from Agile. Here's the little feel good factor on the left hand side from the Tigo uh, reports and on the right hand side from the Sunsync ones and it throws out some wild numbers doesn't it? This was the best day. This was on the 12th of November. As you can see, our generation profile is a little bit weird. We get a little bit of shading from a cherry tree first thing in the morning, which causes this little bit of dip here. And then we get a lot of trees in the afternoon as well as the sun goes around the building. And these red bits of consumption is the load. And these are the cycles of my heat pump, which is quite distinctive. And uh, you can see how the compressor fires up and it tries to bring up a, the flow temperature into the right region and then it just settles down into kind of a minimum modulation area my return on investment calculations are coming at the end of the year so stay tuned for that 
We were originally forecast for six years, eight months, and that's already been adjusted down to five years. But actually, I think it's lower than that. Now we need to start looking at home storage batteries, don't we? Um, thank you once again to all my channel members. These are some of the channel members that are supporting me with just a regular ongoing donation. They also get a lot of benefits at the moment. I think they've got 16 videos that the general public don't yet have access to. They are being trickle fed out to the rest of you. If you want to consider supporting me, you can become a member from just 99p per month. Which batteries should I look at? Put in the comments, I've got the Sunsync 8.8 kilowatt inverter and I need to really start researching batteries because the experiment will be 2024 with solar without batteries and then 2025 solar with batteries. And actually, how much can I save? If I play the game in 2025 but I've added on battery capacity, how much benefit am I getting from it? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Thank you for watching once again. You'll see me again next month. And not too much waffling this time. I think I did pretty well. And that waffle's making me really hungry. Ciao for now.